you know, in, in Shanghai with our, you know, our combine, it gets their foot in the door for the academy. What the academy does is it gives you an opportunity to, you still fight in your professional organization, but you're under our academy instructions. We have a full MMA staff there, S&C team, sports science team, the whole nine there to support them. Based on their progress through some of these other fighting leagues, they can get the opportunity to debut either in a contender series or a UFC fight card, which I might be told, I might be wrong. I have to double check with Forrest. I think we've debuted four or five out of the academy since we started at the end of 2019. Oh, wow. Um, so, uh, and they've done fairly well. So we don't send them in unless they're, I mean, you got to be ready. You have to have shown quite a bit. Because uh, if you look at some of the talent pool they're fighting against, you can't just go off of that because they're destroying a lot of them. They're, they're the best in that region, right? Right. Um, so you have to be able to measure their growth in other ways in terms of significant strike counts and takedown defense. And, you know, really are they minimizing their mistakes as they're getting better and better? That will tell more of a tale on if they'd survive when they get to this caliber of competition. Um, I would and, imagine the very the beginner fight game is still very beginner. Oh yeah, there's a lot of people I imagine get in the ring way before they have any business. I describe it like when you get when you get below like the top fifteen or twenty in the UFC, those are they're basically unless they just haven't had a chance to show themselves yet. They're usually they're specialists in something. They got something they're really good at, and that has gotten them up to this point. And now you're kind of at that threshold where your thing that you're really good at, you're starting to compete with people that are really good at nullifying that one thing you got. So yeah. you got to have a couple other things in your back pocket. So this is when they start to become more well-rounded. Now I got two or three things. It starts to move into more of like a decathlete mentality. I need to be an elite in like three or four, but I need to keep my head above water in the other five or six. Otherwise I'm going to drown fast. Um, and that's what the best of the best do inside the top five. They figure out the thing that you're, what's your lowest hanging fruit. I'm going to exploit him in that area, whether it means taking them to deep water and drowning them in the endurance game. Or if it means, you know, they suck on the feet. I'm really good on the feet. I'm going to try to take them out in the first 90 seconds of the fight. Um, or, my ground game will smother their ground game and right. their striking is significantly better than me. So I'm going to clinch as fast as I can. And I'm going to smother them on the ground. So, um, when you look inside the top five, man, they're good at all those things. They're all great. They get good at all the difference them. in the top five guys. So that, is just yeah. such a so minute. Then it becomes more of a chess match on who can execute faster, who can find the openings quicker because ultimately they can do all those things. It's who can execute it the best, the quickest, most efficient with taking the least amount of damage. Mm -hmm.